And I would like to invite here uh, Enrique Santos Marinas, uh, who uh, was a co-author on the on the ontology of uh, sources and uh, who will uh, present on the deification of fortune and misfortune. Um, Well, thank you very much. First of all, I, I would like to thank you very, really to having invited me. For me, it's a big pleasure and honor. And I have to share something also, something personal, because uh, I have to confess, I must confess that today I, I feel like as if I, I would be submitting myself to the uh, trial of the Slavic gods, who are you? <laughs> so please uh, have mercy to, to these <laughs> poor Spaniards. So uh, let's, I wanted to, to share this. Uh, this travels, but so well, let's start. And well, uh, as the title says, the same as the Roman goddess uh, Fortune or the Greek Tige, uh, in the Slavic pre Christian religion can be found the deification of good luck. Uh, understood as abundance. It is not by chance that in all church Slavonic and in the modern Slavic languages, the term wealth, as you know already, in Czech, bohatstvi, shares the same root uh, uh, with the word for God, Bukh, in Czech. Conceiving the deity as donor of all wealth and, uh, uh, or abundance, as it can be found uh, as part of compound names also or epithets of Slavic gods, such as the East Slavic, Dashbog, Stribog, and so on. Professor Alvarez Pedrosa, uh, um, unlike the alleged Iranian origin of this word, as proposed by Meyer and Jacobson, suggested an Indo-European common origin, uh, both of the Iranian and Slavic terms, the same as Matasovic, who considers that the term um, Indo-European, shown in uh, old uh, Indian Baga, one of the Asuras, the Avestan Baga, God, or Old Church Slavonic Bog, is inherited from Indo-European and has an original meaning of to share portion uh, shown in Old Church Slavonic, for instance, ubogu, ur, or in Greek, phagos, gluten. Regarding the etymology of the theonym dashbog, here, uh, here, well, uh, for instance, uh, that appear in East Slavic uh, sources, as you know, um, well, it has maybe more doubts about this etymology. You know that etymology is not um, an exact science. So uh, it is sometimes a, very, a lot of uh, opinions regarding. So already Dubensky in the first half of the 19th century explained the first half of the name dashed with the final D as an imperative from old church Slavonic verb dati, to give. On this basis, the name dashbog is defined as giving God, Deus Donator. However, Kutarev, in a recent article, supports an alternate explanation of the etymology of the word as proposed by other Russian researchers, who consider the form dashbog to be original, without the final D, and the first part of the name dash to be a possessive adjective from the alleged extinct Proto-Slavic word dag, that would be a cognate of Germanic forms uh, with the meaning day, light, and so on. Sresnevsky considered the extant word uh, having the same root, Dushnitsa, Don, in the Carantanian language, to be the evidence of the existence of the word Dag in Slavic. In, in his turn, Svan Ivaninko follows the etymology given by Abayev, who links it with the Caucasian Svanic naming of St. George, Jgarak, Jgera Gege, good, God, good George, sorry, in which Jgera means good, but not in Svanic, but in Mingrelian. As such, the name Dash Bog is also interpreted by the scholar as good God in connection with a Celtic lexicon uh, like Old Irish Dag, Gaul, uh, Gaulish Dagus, or in Celtic Dagus, good. And the same, it could be the, the God Dagda, like the Celtic God Dagda, the good God, and so on. Well, as for the Slavic theonym Stribo, um, it is also a, a bit difficult. The etymology, okay. the god of winds, according to the tale of Igor, uh, Igor's campaign, uh, it has been explained by Jacobson as a compound name containing the, the term stri, derived from the Proto-Slavic uh, verb sterti, to extend, spread, to uh, wait and scatter. The verb comes from the Proto-Indo-European root ster, which in Latin occurs in the verb sterno and in the Greek verb storni. 
Um, well, the theonym does consist of the stems tree and the word bow. Well, um, on this basis, he considers Stribok to be dispenser of wealthy, a complementary god of Dashbok, the giver of wealthy, or rather, in a more neutral way, the god who scatters or the god, the god who gives. Well, um, proof of Stribok's association with wind is to be found in, the, in his Iranian counterpart, the wind god Vayu, who says in the Yasht uh, 1546 of the Avesta, my name is Huparita, that is, the one who spreads. Well, uh, Jacobson links the pair Dashbog and Stribok with the Vedic pair of Baga, destiny wealthy, and Amsha portion in Sanskrit, two of the six Adityas, or with the Greek pair Isa and Poros. This etymology actually is the most commonly accepted, but is not the only one, as you know. So there are a lot of uh, any other <laughs> interpretations. For instance, uh, I put here some of, of them. Uh, the one made by, uh, I think, uh, Urbanchik, following Lubor Niederle and Alexander Afanasiev, linked the theonym with the Czech dialect, uh, dia dialectal Moravian stri, strong wind, air, and explained the theonym as god of creaking, swishing. Uh, in his turn, Michał uh, Wuczynski turns to the water element, and he reconstructs the Proto-Slavic form for the theonym stri bogu with this uh, this uh, velar e, which would derive from strivati to move quickly, to flow, to run, and so it would be a kind of water um, deity. But um, here we have this problem with a long, um, uh, with a vowel in the in the in the stem that is not easy to to explain or, or to uh, uh, linguistically or phonetically. Well, um, also we have uh, finally this, uh, well, among others, this uh, Selenian connected the stri root with the Russian verb striti, uh, proto-Slavic sutiri, to annihilate, to destroy, and consider Stribok to be an, an annihilate and destroying god, the god of war. This view was supported by Orlov and Borovsky. This may also be indi indicated by the fact by, by that Bayou is also worshipped as the god of war, the Iranian Bayou the god of war, of the dead, of harvest, and also the god uh, of the good and bad fate, as uh, he connects uh, sky and earth. Well, in this case, as far as we are concerned, the possible link with the Indo-Iranian god Vayu strengthens his possible association with the destiny and fate. Well, but let's pass also to the subject, to the main subject. As Leszek Slupeski here present, uh, and Roman Sarov already remarked, um, the identification of the Slavic god uh, uh, with the, of a Slavic god with the Roman goddess Fortuna was made by an English author, William of Malmesbury, in his Acts of the Kings of England, uh, dating back to the late 11th or early 12th century. Although he attributed it by mistake to the Celtic Vindelic people rather than to the Slavic Veneti, as it should be understood, as uh, Slupetsky and, and Sarov did. Apart from the Interpretatio Latina of the author, it was not clear which was such god of, or goddess, mm, taking into account the female gender of Roman Fortuna. According to Slupetsky and Sarov, it could be, refer, it could be referring either to the Lutetians, Radogost, and a cult uh, of, of Svarojic, or to some female deity, deity of unknown name, or alternatively to Arcona of Onrugen and the Temple of Sventovit, located there. Regarding the cult of uh, Svarojic in the city of Riedegost, following the account of Tietmat of Mersburg's Chronicle, that you know very well, of course, <laughs> uh, can be found the oracular rites performed by the priest by throwing the lots that can be seen here. Um, also, there were these horns uh, in the, uh, of animals in the, um, in the founding of the, of the temple. And, um, well, uh, in what concerns the Slavic, uh, this is Slavic, sorry, no, this, sorry. Uh, uh, here we have the role of the sacred horse also of the god obtaining omens that we can find in the gods of Sventovit of Arcona and Triglav of Szczecin too. As far as the oracular character of the sacred lake linked to the bad ill animal as a wild boar. And it was, I think, here in, in this other uh, text. Mm, yes, the, the wild boar. The oracular and eschatological character of the sacred lake can be found even clearer in the description of the city of Rethra by Adam of Bremen in the deeds of Bishop of the Hamburg Church here. So uh, regarding this lake, also with a classical citation from Virgil Senate. 
Uh, in what concerns the Slavic goddesses, though there are just a few mentions in the historical sources, Supetsky and Sarov remind that in the Edmar of Merseburg is mentioned uh, a goddess of war among the, among the Lutitians, whose name is not told hmm, here. Uh, however, we must not forget the often forgotten goddess Siwa of the Polabians, as attested by Helmut of Borsau in his Chronicle of the Slavs. Here, the author speaks of blood sacrifices to obtain oracles. The etymology of the goddess Siwa has been explained by most authors with the Slavic participle Jiva, here. Uh, well, here, here it was actually here. <laughs> the participle Jiva, alive, being alive, and has been associated to the god Zivie of the Poles, as mentioned by Jan Dlugos in his Annals here. But um, actually, the, this Zivie, uh, well, here we, in this passage, the names of the gods Pogoda and Zivie could be understood as personifications of the good weather and life, uh, respectively. Nevertheless, Jan Lugos speaks of a male or neuter um, Zivie and not of a goddess, a female goddess. And a different interesting etymology of the goddess Siwa uh, was done by uh, Regis Boyer, Siwa as the dark one relating with this Indo-European, Proto-Indo-European root that would mean actually to cover, to conceal. Mm? So it would refer, it would associate it not to the chthonic, chthonic uh, uh, black earth, mm? dark earth, but to the covered sky, to the clouds, let's say. So, well, etymology is not an exact science, as I told you. So um, let's consider still this, this interpretation. So um, this etymology would, re would relate her with the mysterious god Chernevok, of course, that you know very well, uh, from the, um, uh, the following passage belonging to Helmholtz Chronicle. Much has been said, as you know, and written on the god Chernevok, the black god, and his possible counterpart, uh, Bielbog, or Bilbog, the white god and their alleged reflection of a dualistic conception of the world of the Slavic pre-Christian religion, drawing, for instance, Miroslava Snajenko, an affirmative conclusion. Uh, it is especially interesting the link that she made of Bilbog, or the White God, with the Belbuk Monastery located near Treptuf uh, on the Rega River, nowadays Treviatuf, in modern-day Poland, that has been noticed by, by her. On the contrary, this dualistic conception has been explained by other authors as an interpretatio christiana, mainly due to the moral concepts of good and Neville, or even to an influence of Bogomilism. The unnamed good god of the passage could be related to Dashbog in the etymology linked to the Celtic Dagda, if we accept uh, this etymology to be correct. Regarding the rite of pass, uh, are pass around, passing around a bowl into which they utter words in the name of the gods of good and evil reminds us, uh, reminds us the craters of gold or cups of gold and silver belonging to the god Triglav, in, with which the nobles and great men of Stetin used to make prophecies, feast and drink, according to the account of Herbert in his dialogue uh, on the life of St. Otto of Bamberg. Um, focusing on the black color of the evil god and his uh, chthonic connotations, we must remind what is told by Saxo Grammaticus in his uh, Deeds of the Danes regarding the cult of the goddess Ventovit of Arcona and how the Rani obtained omens by throwing black and white pieces of wood, as you know very well, of course. And the Christian victim also of the human uh, sacrifice here, yeah. The, the, the Christian victim that was offered annually to the god Sventovit of Arcona, according to Herbert in his Chronicle of the Slavs, who was to, chosen by fate, uh, in Latin, a source that could be also by throwing lots. Uh, moreover, as you know well, of course, Axo Grammaticus mentioned the practice of obtaining omens with the horse of the god Sventovit, that was white, as you know also. And... Um, on the contrary, the horse belonging to the god Triglav, uh, also was mentioned by, by Professor Pletersky, uh, the god Triglav in Stetsin was black. And omens uh, were obtained with it too, according to the testimony of Herbert in his dialogue on the life of Otton of Bamberg. And in the following passage, Herbert mentioned also some omens that were obtained in the sanctuary of, Ch of Ch uh, Stetsin with wood, with given more details about those omens, but at least with wood. 
Um, as you see in the here present, also, uh, has already shown the god triglav had some scatological and cataclysmic, as he defined, associations to being a god that could see all three kingdoms, the heaven, the earth, and, and the hell, the underworld, with his three heads, according to the testimony of Evo's life of Saint Otto of Bamber. But this reminds us very much uh, this testimony of an Arab traveler, this Masudi, in his work uh, of the 10th century, the meadows of gold and mines of gems. Uh, here, under the feet of what looks like a god of the dead, can be found some black animals and beings identified as ants, black, black crows, and Africans, he said. The marvelous waters of different colors, also that are mentioned here, reminds very much the passage of Adam of Bremen uh, that was cited by uh, Yizidinda. Um, re um, regarding the god worshipped in Volin, well, whom uh, he calls this uh, Neptune, um, this the, the, one, the Neptune of the threefold nature, for the island is bathed by three straits of which it is said. Uh, um, that one is of an intense green color, another wheat, uh, whitish, and the third rages furiously in perpetual tempest. So, retaking, retaking the black color among the West Slavic gods, we must not forget the god, um, this Tierna Glofi, um, this, uh, that is located in the island of Rugen by the Scandinavian saga of Nuk's uh, descendants, or Niklinga saga uh, from the 13th century. Surprisingly, the gods Pisamar and Tiernaglofi do not appear in Saxo Grammaticus Gestadanorum. The etymology of Pisamar is not clear. It has been explained, um, for instance, uh, very recently by Wuczynski as uh, an adjective, an epithet, more peaceful, may he be more peaceful, may he have more peace, being a wishing name that could correspond even to Sventovit, according to Wuczynski. Pisamar, is, it is said, that uh, was worshipped in the nearby god of Asund, identified by Uchinsky with the modern-day city of Sagard, nearby the Black Lake, there in the island of Ruger, Rugen. The temple of Tiernaglofi would have fallen in 1172, three years after the temple of Sventovit. Regarding his etymology, Alexander Giestor uh, and Andrzej Sijewski read the name as Chernoglav, Chernoglo, Blackhead. Though Alexander Bruckner, on the other hand, thought that the only correct reading of the name was Triglav, again Triglav. However, bearing in mind that the old Icelandic word Tjörn, or genitive Tjarnar, means tarn, small lake, we would rather suggest a relationship of the god uh, Tjarnaglofi with the nearby Black Lake in the island of Rugen. And we could even deduce its oracular and eschatological character in a similar way as Svarogis or of Radogos with the lake. But well, it is just an. Um, a, a theory. The function of Tiernaglofi as a god of victory could link it to the white concept of fortune, but not specifically with the abundance of fertility. His iconography with the silver moustache reminds us uh, the description of the god Perun, of course, of, uh, in uh, Povius Bremenichliet, but here, uh, uh, Povius Bremenichliet, you know, the god Perun with the um, uh, in Kiev pantheon with silver head and gold moustache or to the three silver-plated heads of the idol of Triglav of Stetsin, as described by this anonymous monk of Prufren in, well, um, in his life of St. Otto. In, in the list uh, of Slavic gods uh, um, associated to the black color, we can add also uh, another Regis Boyer's etymology interpretation of the god Pripegala among the West Slavs, as described in this letter from the year 11.8, by, sent by Adelgot, Archbishop Arch of Magdeburg, to other German bishops. The etymology of this theonym is much debated. Bruckner proposed uh, uh, the etymology um, here, Prihbihvalu, who increases his pre praise. Boyer believes it derives of the common, uh, from the common Slavic Piklu, Pitch tar preceded by the prevert pre, so that it would mean the blackened one, and would be related to the theonyms Chernebok, Cherneglavs, Tiernaglofi, and maybe perhaps with that of the goddess Siwa, the dark one, if we accept this etymology. Loma reconstruct uh, a name pri, uh, Privigolva, uh, that would mean hunter of heads, which fits well with that what is said of him in other ghosts letter. Uh, the link with the Greek god Priapus and the demon Belphagor, demonization of the Canaanian god Baal, is not proof of a fertility function of the Slav deity and is simply an interpretatio romana deriving it uh, from the phonetic proximity 
of the first uh, and last syllables of the two names, Priapus and uh, Pripegala. Uh, yes, so it is not that clear its relationship with the color black. Mm. On the other side, it is remarkable that the references to the white color in the historical sources are scarce compared to the recurrence of the black color, apart from the mention uh, of the white horse of the god Sventovit of Arcona and his black and white lots. But already, uh, already Professor Pletescu mentioned, referred to this source, it is this uh, vision, this uh, funny vision of this priest uh, uh, in, sorry, in the, it was in Volgast, mm, uh, who showed himself and before an inhabitant of the city of Volgast as if he was their god in a theophany in order to convince him of not accepting foreign gods, the Christian god. Uh, according to her words. Uh, being a fake, in this case, the white color is associated with a fecundity god, as already Professor Pletes Pletesky remarked, as the impostor actually uh, described himself, this uh, pagan priest. Um, finally, we, we must not forget the deification of the bad luck or the bad omens embodied by the zoomorphic uh, figure of Div, as mentioned in Tale of Figures campaign, for instance, in, among the East Slavs. And um, yeah, the, the Slavic term div uh, would specifically mean demon. Well, uh, or, well, here it is, uh, I think it, it was here, yeah. Demon in a process of polarization that occurred in a parallel way in Iranian, Avesta and Daewa, coming from the ancient root for the supreme celestial divinity of the Indo-European, Dievs, or Dios, and occupying its position, the word for wealthy, Bo, or bo, just the same or baga, just the same as in Iranian. In this sense, Div of the East Slavs would correspond to maybe Chernobog, the black god of the West Slavs, as mentioned by Helmut of Bosau. However, the role of Div in the Tale of Eagles campaign appears to be reduced to that of an owl or a bird of ill omen or a, uh, a raven. I don't know. But this passage is even is given renewed interest due to a comparison with the zoomorphic god that appears in a Western Slavic text, actually a Czech text, text uh, the Chronicle of Dalimil from the 14th century, in an excerpt of the conversation between the Prince Batupluk and the Prince Bozivoy, and who accused the Princess Batupluk, who was Christian, accused the, the Prince Bozivoy of worship a long eared owl. Well, it's a bird, also night bird, and so on. The association of bad omens with birds can be found in, other, in another passage uh, belonging to the Tale of Igor uh, campaign, uh, dealing with the dream of Prince Vyatoslav, including a black shroud as a symbol of death, crocs of crows, or two hawks being killed. Also. Well, so the conclusions, they're coming to the conclusions if there can be any of those. So uh, actually in this, in, this, um, in this passage, we have again the black color, of course, of the black shroud and the black shroud. And uh, with the god Div, uh, though he reduced to a minor figure, we return to the question of the Iranian parallelism regarding the possible dualism of Slavic pro-Christian religion. Well, regarding the conclusions, as I said, the, uh, we can say at least that the concept of fortune was associated to abundance and wealth in ancient Slavic culture and pre-Christian religion being personif personified in different possible deities, both male and female. In the Slavic pre-Christian religion, the cult of the divinities associated to fortune, fate, and luck included the rights of throwing lots as a manifestation of the God's will and that of making prophecies or expressing wishes in sacred bowls or cups. Moreover, their cult was associated to horns of animals as a symbol of abundance, of course, and the deification of fortune among the Slavs could be related to a possible inherent dualistic uh, conception of the world that would date back to Indo-European culture, the same as in the Iranian culture. In the Slavic case, it would be linked to the opposition of black and white colors as possible symbols of light and darkness, or of the bright sky and the dark earth, even chthonic. But I will dare a bit more in a riskier interpretation. <laughs> and uh, we could perhaps identify Sventovit of Arcona and Triglav of Szczecin with the white and black gods, respectively, basing on the color of their sacred horses and in their similar rituals and auguries of an omens, including the parallel of the sacred bowls or cups for the prophecy rite associated to Chernebog and Triglav. 
as well as on the catachthonic character of the latter as defined by Dinda and his relationship with the black sun. This is really interesting also observation. And this dual opposition of the white sun and the dark sun embodied by white god and the black god could in fact be extended to a triadic, triadic structure with a third god, this is Barogic, among the West Slavs, the color of whose horse is not mentioned in the sources. Perhaps, and here I link to Professor Pletersky, uh, the color of, uh, well, there can be found a reflection of them in the folklore of the East Slavs and in those folk tales of, uh, of Afanasiev, folk tales of Vasilisa the Beauty and Baba Yaga. You know that uh, Baba Yaga, when she was walking through the forest to the house, the hut, of, Basilis, of uh, Baba Yaga, she met three uh, knights. One, the first one was white, the second one was red, and the third one was mm, black. And maybe, maybe they were, would be a reflection of those characters in mythology, of those moments of the day, of the sun, but also seasons of the year, as also were defined by Professor Pletersky, together with a female in her old age, the winter, uh, that would be the Baba Yaga, but uh, so it is really interesting. We cannot dismiss the existence of a Slavic goddess of fortune among the West Slavs, either it was Siwa, the Dark One, or, or Jiva as the personification of life, or a different goddess. However, being correct, uh, the etymology of Siwa as the Dark One, it wouldn't have a chthonic character, being more related to the cloudy or covert sky than to the dark earth. There would be if even a third possibility that I wouldn't dare before to tell, but now I, I will dare because uh, following Professor Pletersky paper or uh, conference, and that it could also be at the possibility of a multi-gender deity. And, uh, well, uh, in, well, how do you say that? To, uh, uh, taking all of them, all of those characters in one as a multi-gender um, deity. That would be the third possibility. Well, and finally, among the East Slavs, there can be found a deification of ill omens in the figure of Div, a celestial god, uh, god in the zoomorphic uh, shape of a bird. And among the East Slavs, uh, uh, well, uh, the opposition in pairs that had been identified, uh, identified by Ivan of Toporo between the gods Perun and Veles, the thunder god, and the chthonic god of Cater and the underground. And perhaps in the, celestial, in the celestial dimension, it would be extensive to the opposition between the good god Dashbog and even Strivog to the demon or the bad god Div. But well, it is just an assumption. So, well, thank you very much for your attention. And that's it. Thank you very much for this uh, tour de course uh, presentation or tour to de Fontes presentation. Um, we have a space for uh, two questions maybe. So, Well, thank you very much for absolutely interesting presentation and uh, one problem and one comment. Well, the problem is with uh, etymologies always. This is difficult knowledge. Yeah. And uh, one of those is this of Jivie, uh, Jiva, Shiva, Siva, who knows what, is, what could it mean. Uh, you tried, among many possibilities, try to interpret uh, Siva as black. Well, I would add that we have uh, uh, substantive uh, or something else. Uh, Shive what means in fact white. And Shivek is a white horse. But this white horse means sometimes gray. So this could be both, in fact, black and white. So uh, going uh, along those uh, etymologies, uh, I'm very grateful for you for bringing here uh, Stribog, who is a bit underwrapped goat uh, and is extremely important. And what's more, my grand grandmother was born in the village Stryboga in Mazovia. So I can bless you as a, dis uh, as a descent of uh, Archpriest of uh, Stribog. Uh, okay, uh, but among those etymologies which are possible, uh, 
Alexander Geichstor wanted to make of uh, Stribok, Stribok and some godfather. And so possibilities are quite many. And the god seems to be extremely interesting. And what's more, this place in Mazovia looks very promising, in fact, for me, for looking for some sanctuary, because it's so rare toponym uh, in Poland. So that's it. It needs some research. So thank you a lot for for presentation. Thank you very much for your really interesting comments. So are there any other questions or remarks? Okay, uh, if no, we can, uh, do you want to? Uh, no, no, no. Okay, thank you very much once again. Thank you.